Hey everyone, today we will be learning how to design an anti-tank rifle based on a previous scenario. We will also be going through a lot of tricks and my thoughts. In today's scenario, we will be facing off against a totally not Panzer IIc that's up armored to 30mm front armor at 5 degrees. A quick shout out to all the Rixus supporters. These amazing people make the development of Rixus possible. You can check out how to support Rixus in the links below. All right, let's look at the cartridge together. So this is our main composition is steel because we're using this for armor piercing purposes. And we can see that the shape is a Spitzer II for just general aerodynamics. And we have a total jacket. This is our gilding metal to help protect it so that it can actually engage the rifling. So some interesting things here is that Spitzer II is actually not the best shape for an armor piercing round. But I just wanted to demonstrate for you some common beginner pitfalls here. Our casing composition is 863. It's a pretty common composition um, in military casings. And you can see that we have a boxer primer. And this allows us to have a uh, use center fire mechanisms and have a higher pressure. All right, let's talk about the receiver. So first thing to note is our main composition is using 4140, which is our primary steel. So you can see this is a chromium steel. It has high yield strength, which is the main property that we're looking for. But it's also the other properties here, which make it quite good as well. But the main one we're focusing on once again is the yield strength. You can see it has some of the highest yield strength and of course the cost is higher to compensate so our secondary composition here is just a tool steel 1020 and we have all our little safety bells and whistles as well as enabling the magazine feature so depending on what you want you want milled or stamped receivers uh, here we're going for milled um, stamping really requires your industry to develop so the more your industry develops, the more reliable stamping is. And we have a tools assembly here because we don't want things to be disassembled that easily. Um, so this barrel attachment is threaded. This is very important because our barrel also needs to match this, but it's also important for us if we want to replace barrels in the future. In our magazine here, just a typical integral box, we have four rounds and our fit is staggered. Not much to note here. Also, make sure to have the correct orientation as well. And of course, we have enabled the stripper clip notch over here. Moving on to the trigger and guard. Um, you can see it's a really simple single action trigger. Base weight of 1 kilogram or around 2.5 pounds, which is pretty reasonable. Um, again, it's at the bottom. With the additional metal work, we just want things to be nice and ready. For our bolt here, um, we want to lock at the front for added support. And of course, same composition for 140. All right, quick look at our barrel roughly more than one meter our main composition for 150 because it's stronger that's something we want to prototype with and things we can see here are chamber material thickness and bore material thickness uh, this is a simple one so it just goes all the way and you can see there on the bottom uh, one thing that we want to note is our rifling which we have here i'm guessing around 30 centimeters per twist that's just intuition and again making sure our barrel is finished nicely 
and most importantly, our connection to the receiver. Here we are in the firing range. So we have everything loaded up, and here we can see we immediately have an error. So what this shows us, B stands for barrel. Um, we can see that the barrel is going to instantly deformed because of overpressure in that area. So it gives us a nice handy zone of where to look for. So we're going to have to go back and fix that, um, first of all, by changing our barrel. All right, we fixed it. So we can start seeing our stats here. Um, so one thing that we can notice is immediately our miserable barrel lifetime um, and also our pressure. That's a really high pressure. I'm um, just noting that burn curve there, which is quite regressive. Um, recall energy is also a bit high, but should be fine. Okay, looking at our 1000 meter at 10 increments. Uh, it looks all right, but doesn't look what we need to be at. But we're happy with our first results. And just our armor testing here at average sea level conditions. Oh, we can't penetrate it. Surprise. Um, so here I'm just going through. Okay, we can penetrate 10 meters. 12 is still possible. And we're just going to cycle through a few more values. So we are able to penetrate our own diameter, which is good, at least. So 17, not bad, but still kind of a far cry from the 30 that we need to penetrate. So we'll try to find how to improve things. After a tiny change, we actually got a much better result in terms of both lifetime and also penetration. So let's show how we did that and see their peak pressure is lower as well. So here is our new propellant. Um, so in the time lapse, it might not be apparent, but here we have a one perforated smaller green. This allows for a neutral burn compared to our one millimeter um, no perforation green. So we didn't even need to do a barrel change yet. And here we already got a much better result. So here we can go and change this a little more. So here, um, I already experimented with this. I just wanted to show you guys the difference. Ooh, look at that nozzle velocity. So our lifetime has also taken another drastic hit. Um, and here, shattering. Very interesting. So this is actually inherent property of steel penetrators. When they hit a target fast enough, that is sufficiently thick. So if we actually lower the thickness, we can see that actually does penetrate through. Behold, the armor piercing capped round. So this is going to be our solution to the shattering problem. So what an armor piercing cap is, is a layer of soft or relatively softer metal. There can be a soft cap or hard cap. This basically helps protect the penetrator and flattens it out before it actually drives through the armor. So this is what prevents the shattering. And if we look at the range, ooh, 27 millimeters of penetration at 100 meters is pretty good, almost at 30. But you can see me on the right circling over here. We can see compared to our previous round, there's a pretty terrible drop off in aerodynamics um, because of the shape of the cap that's required. And see, that's a terrible performance. So how do we fix this? So one way to do it is that you can see I'm converting the APC into APC PPC, which is the ballistic cap. You can see the ballistic cap nicely sits on top. This gives us some aerodynamics. It's a hollow layer of, again, metal. And on impacts, this will break apart. So let's look at the performance. So again, we can see our aerodynamics improve. Uh, not by that much though, because you can also notice that by doing these, we also create a lighter round, which is a different problem that we need to solve. So the way we're going to fix our damage problem here is by once again upgrading this round 
and we're going to turn it into an APCRBC. So R stands for rigid, and the rigid part is usually tungsten or tungsten carbide um, in the Rixis era. And see that we're starting with five centimeters, and we're going to test it out immediately. Okay, a bit lower velocity due to the speed. Uh, sorry, the mass, and ooh, it's actually going quite well. But once again, you can see our performance dropping off a little bit on range. That should be fine. And we are barely penetrating 30 millimeters at 100 meters, but not that high. So we're just going to tweak things a little bit more. And one thing I want to point out here is that on the screen, you can see that it is a tungsten rod um, surrounded by steel. And that's not good because the point of the rigid is so that we can actually reduce the diameter, increase the point. Here you can see me just look through the table for aluminum alloy. And what this is going to do is to allow for everything but the actual penetrator to crumple and flatten. So our first test doesn't do too well. That's fine. So here we're just going to up things a little bit. There is a sweet spot. Sweet spot for what we want to do. Okay, now it's actually comfortably penetrating and you can see the barrel lifetime is actually, it was up before, but now it's not. You can even do 32 millimeters at 100 meters. So that's good. So that's a reliable, we want like above 50% for reliable penetration. At 200 meters, it's still able to do it. Uh, not as reliable, but hey, at least we can do it now. So some further tweaks. It's kind of comically thick compared to the rest of it, but sometimes that's how that works. Okay, and this is actually pretty incredible. 84%. Not not bad at all. It's actually pretty good. And see up to thirty five millimeters. And see even up to two hundred is completely fine. Three hundred is a bit off, but yeah, two fifty still really good almost reliable and one thing to note is the armor angle as well which has a pretty big effect yeah i can see it's it's quite a big difference <laughs> we can actually penetrate it at 300 meters now all right let's go over the redesign of my barrel after a bit of thought so here one thing that we notice is that there's two layers and we split it into the sleeve and auto fretage. So it's still the same diameter overall, but uses the auto fretage. So auto fretage is really important, especially when it comes to the early modern firearms from the 20th century onwards, um, because it allows for much higher pressure. What this does is the outer layer is actually compressing on the inner layer. So when things are fired, it actually expands and restores to neutral first before expanding further. It's actually interesting how the elastic limits and things do that and <laughs> manufacturing processes. But one thing you'll notice is that the complexity is much higher and that leads to a much higher cost. So when you look at the range, um, we can see our lifetime has gone up significantly. You can also see that I've beefed up the receiver as well in the meantime, just by increasing the thickness there. Okay, so I just want to quickly show an advanced barrel just for reference. You can see that it allows for tapers and different sections here. 
And you can just see the difference between just a straight line and a taper. This allows us to adjust the weights in expense of accuracy and some other factors. All right, let's go over the finished firearm. Um, a lot of this is self-explanatory. You can see that I use laminate to increase the weight. Um, just going over this. Wow. It's a really nice looking gun. You can see our bipod attachment. Also how the bolt actuates. Some cool stuff here. And you can also see that we recolored the cartridge just kind of to fit that tungsten AP tip look for distinction. Yeah, so some other things you can see that we use a Monte Carlo comb. There are different types. Straight probably is a bit better since we're not using a scope. Um, but yeah, just straight grip because we're using a pistol grip. Our ergonomics are quite good. We have all the other bells and whistles as well for cleaning rods and attachments and the bipod that we saw earlier, and also the iron sights, which are properly tuned and have both parts. Yeah, you need both. <laughs> Otherwise, it's not going to be useful. So you can see our recoil energy was um, purple before, and now it's red. So now it's able to be fired. Um, it's still going to cause some damage to your soldiers if you fired a lot, but now it's quite manageable um, in its intended role, since you won't be firing it that much per day if you're facing the frequency of the armored assaults. But yeah, overall, very nice package. Um, hope you guys enjoyed. If you make sure to like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, whatever. Also, please consider supporting the game. Thank you very much for your time. Hope you learned something.